Greetings, hello and welcome. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Imperial Jedi. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you guys the basics on how to get a uh, Transit Empire up and running. And I've done a lot of trial and error. Uh, I've tried quite a few different ways. I kind of feel like this is the best way to get really profitable really quickly. And to kind of just give yourself a really good foothold to just get like literally millions of dollars coming in. And that way you can kind of have some fun trying some uh, some other stuff out. And if it doesn't really work, you don't got to stress too much about uh, losing some money. Alright, so for those of you that are like totally brand new to the game, it's basically a transport management game with a little bit of city building kind of mixed in. So for me, when I'm getting started, um, what I look for... Oh, and just by the way, we're on a large map, and it's the year 1900, and we're playing on a USA map. And so what I like to do when I'm starting is I'll pick just kind of like a little starting city that's got maybe a few um, kind of towns nearby that are in a nice little line with lots of um, kind of resources. And it's relatively flat around here, so I think it's a pretty good starting area. So I was going to use Little Rock as kind of like our bigger of the cities, our little, little kind of transit hub as it were. And we'll route a few different lines through here. But uh, just to get us started, what I'm going to do is make a train line in between Wilmington and Little Rock. I'll show you guys a nifty little interchange, just so you guys can get some ideas on um, maybe how to make one of those in the game. And then we're going to do some in-town transit in Little Rock and Wilmington to help support the train line. And we're going to have a bus route that goes from Detroit just to Little Rock. And I'll kind of explain my logic, all that stuff going along, and I'll just drop some tips and everything. But uh, definitely be sure to subscribe, because I'll be uh, doing a few episodes of this, just kind of showing you guys the basics and everything. And uh, we'll have some fun. We'll, you know, eventually move into um, industry and, like, that kind of stuff, and, like, planes and, like, shipping and everything. And so what I'm doing right now is if we were to start doing some of our um, transit routes, they uh, unfortunately wouldn't make too much sense, because a lot of the um, streets in town are kind of, like, dead end and, and that kind of stuff. So we're just going to close off a few of the areas. And you'll notice, um, not really the easiest sometimes to get straight roads. So maybe you'll have to start from the middle, just kind of work your way that way. A little bit of trial and error is kind of kind of needed. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and then whenever possible, I try to minimize how many buildings I um, have to uh, build over. Because it's very expensive to um, to remove some of like, the bigger factories and, and like that kind of stuff. Essentially, it's like the more profitable the building, the more expensive it is to move it. So there we go, a little bit more of a box shape, which is um, kind of what we're after. We're in North America, so that's totally fine, right? And we're going to be putting our train station kind of pointing towards um, you know, the next city we want to uh, go to. And then since this is going to be more of a transit hub, um, we'll start with a bigger train station. We'll do four tracks, but at the longer uh, platform too. You can always upgrade these later, which is great. And then to rotate stuff, it's M and N. Let's go both your directions. And then to get finer little micro rotations, just hold down the shift key and then you can kind of get that. And then you'll notice when you go close to a road, um, some of the buildings get highlighted. That's your catchment area. Uh, so hypothetically, people would walk from there to the train station. It's very expensive to move all those buildings out of the way. The same with the roads and stuff. So we're going to put our train station just on the outskirts. And this is why we're going to be doing a, um, an in-town transit line, just to ensure that we're making money off that and we're getting people using our train kind of line. Otherwise, that'll just not be profitable either. So we want everything to be efficient and just, you know, good transfer points and you know, that kind of stuff. So let's loosely do the same thing in Wilmington, and then we can connect our two train stations, and then we can start putting in some lines, and um, then we can start putting in some of the in-town transit. And then, you know, this whole time, we're going to be on pause, just because the city itself, as the game is running, it's going to do a little bit of building... Like new people will move in, like new stores will pop up, that kind of stuff. You'll notice that will go on like overdrive basically when you start bringing goods and like transit lines and people and everything into the city itself. So that's why we're paused right now, just in case you guys are curious. And you know, just with my my roads here, same idea as before. We're just trying to close off some of the other streets. Nothing too nuts. I'm just trying to stick to more or less the same kind of layout that the um, city kind of started with. And then in the year 1900, we can borrow up to 30 million, so just be aware of that. But Basically, the way we're going to set things up, we are going to dip into a, um, a negative budget in the beginning. But that is totally no problem. We will become very profitable very quickly. Okay, so this is essentially what we're after. And then just because of the way this is set up, let's actually go one more street over like this. So for those of you who like city building, you still get a little bit of that, which is nice. Okay, 
a smaller station this time around to save some money here and there. Oh, and we don't want a terminal station. We want just a way through. Okay, so let's put that right around here. And then just for the sake of getting some more people, why don't we connect these? That'll help anyone who's walking just get to the train station a bit faster. Okay, great. Um, let's go ahead now and put in the, um, the rails between these two areas. And you'll notice these little uh, speed indicators. Um, right now, the maximum speed we can do is 120. If I were to do a sharp turn, you can see that's not very fast. So you want to just do slow, gentle curves just to ensure you get a nice speed. Keep an eye on the um, grounds. You know, if you don't like the way that kind of looks, you can kind of follow the contour lines instead of just plowing through um, mountains and everything. And you can always do some uh, terraforming of your own if you want to. Just got some brush, uh, brush size options here. Just kind of, you know, bring the soil down and stuff, level it out. I wouldn't say the terraforming is perfect in this game, but the options are there. And then for those of you who do enjoy, you know, jazzing up areas by putting in some assets, that kind of stuff. There's some, you know, trees, props, and everything. In town stuff too, like little, little markers and everything. So options for that, which is cool. Alright, so just to hopefully get these to line up um, uh, properly, let's uh, now leave from this direction. They don't have to be like a perfect straight line. Especially because of the um, you know, topography and everything. And we're going to try and avoid just cutting in front of the highways too often just to keep traffic moving. Alright, so we're just going to yeah connect these two up. And I don't know if we can just go straight ahead and do it. So I can just go one shot here. Nope, too much slope. That's totally the problem though. And I imagine this has to do with this road right here. And that's kind of what's slowing my um, computer down a little bit too. It's just trying to recalculate everything. So we'll just take this out for the moment. Um, you'll notice that this icon up here is now flashing. That just reminds us that we need to put that road back in afterwards. But no problem. All right, so now over to our um, our river crossing right here. You'll notice that those squares were starting to show up. And that's just telling us that the height isn't enough for a, um, a boat to go through, which is no problem. I don't really think we're going to be bringing any shipping in here anyway. But that would turn green if we made a taller bridge. So now that we can see where we're going, why don't we just connect like that? Great, just make sure we're on the right. And we are perfect. Maximum speed and everything, great. So we'll bring this one through right here. And of course, there's nothing stopping us from removing this bridge later on and putting a taller one in place. But I kind of plan on doing our, um, our freight either via um, train or truck just to kind of get us started in and around this area. And then just because I, you know, the city, like I was saying, grows um, on its own, I'm going to put some of these tracks in place now, just as a bit of placeholder. So that, you know, if the city grows and we forget to kind of work back here, we don't have to worry about erasing and removing too many buildings, and that'll save us some, some money. And of course, it's a little bit tricky, but you can terraform in here. You have to remove the tracks and that kind of stuff. Just plan for that, but I don't really let those things kind of kind of drive me. All right. Um, before I put this road back in place, let's bring these um, these rails out now. Just so we can kind of get an idea of where they're going to be. Great. I guess now we can reconnect this. Cool. And that can just go back in like that. Excellent. Not too shabby. Now, we're not going to make the full uh, connection over um, to... Uh, uh, Pueblo, but I um, almost forgot the name of that. Um, but we're just going to put an interchange here, and then hopefully this will inspire you guys. Like, they're pretty cool to make. And then for those of you who played Train Fever, like this kind of stuff, it was really, really, like, extraordinarily challenging to do. But now it's like, oh, it's so much fun. And it looks really cool when you get all the signals and everything kind of working, and all the trains rooting through. Uh, what I'm doing right now, I'm just trying to follow the uh, contour of the, um, the ground height a little bit better here. Okay, great. So we've got that in place. And then what I'm going to do, this is where the fun begins, is I'm going to grab from the outside and we're going to make another uh, little bridge right here. And we're going to try and get as much speed as we can. 104 looks pretty darn good. Bring that across. And then we're going to try and connect, again, just with a lot of speed, hopefully in through uh, through here. And there we go, 100 plus. Oh, that's great. So that's really fun. 
And then now what we're going to do is we're going to look for the uh, snap point. You can see the little uh, signal box right there. So we'll just grab that same connection. And we'll just follow this along. Like when you're doing the rails parallel, uh, you'll kind of feel that there's a little snap. It lets you just kind of follow along really quickly. And this is kind of fun, right? Because, I mean, the end goal, like the logic behind what I'm doing here, there we go, is um, when we get all these cities linked up, say like, you know, Cape uh, Coral and... Um, Cape Corral, whatever you want to call it, uh, Fresno and Detroit, everything. Uh, we'll continue that line going up to Pueblo, but we'll also have one that continues going straight, just like Wilmington, Buffalo onwards. And then consequently, if you're going the other way, you just kind of make, you know, that little loop right there. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. So we'll put in the signals, get everything kind of working properly. Um, before I forget, let's just put in our little back uh, connection over here. Great. Okay. So signals and switches, I mean, they're not too complicated. They might seem a little bit intimidating, but really not too bad. So we're doing a North American kind of layout. So I'm going to have a right-hand drive. So that means trains that are coming in, since this is our like last little station for the moment, will switch over to this side, and they're going to leave on, um, on that side. And we're going to be using multiple trains, which is why I've doubled up on the track. You can do this with a single one, uh, single track if you're having just one train. But again, I kind of feel like this is the best bang for the buck. And you'll kind of see how this all unfolds, how it's, how it's worth it. Um, okay, so these switches are already in place. That's great. We'll just put the switch in over on this side. And I don't really think we're going to worry too much about the other side, just because there's no trains or anything there yet. All right, so switching to signals. Um, the station itself has one built in, so you don't actually have to have one at the end of your um, uh, station right here. But um, the logic is, so if a train is coming in, we don't want him or her, <laughs> the train, uh, it, I guess. We don't want the train to uh, switch over to this track if there's already another train in here um, waiting to go that way. They'll just be in front of each other and just chaos and a whole big, whole big mess, right? So we're going to put the signal here, and that kind of acts like a stoplight. So the train can't proceed until the way is clear. And then we'll know the way is clear because a train leaving will flick this switch, which will kind of open that one, and, you know, bada bing, bada boom. And then in terms of the spacing, like the way signals work just in general is, uh, I'll just put this one down here for just for now. So if you're a train approaching this signal and you see that it's open, that just tells you, the train operator, that from here until the next signal, it is totally clear, go as fast as the speed limit lets you, that kind of thing. However, if you approach this and it's closed, it just means that from here till the next signal, uh, there's a train in the way, so you can't proceed, it's not safe. And then what would be inefficient is if we had this next signal, let's say like way, 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 like way down here. This would be so inefficient. Because imagine how long you'd have to wait if you're a train right here until the coast is clear. So that's kind of how we kind of find the, uh, you know, the spacing, right? And then in terms of roads, the way the signals uh, efficiently work is have your stop before the road. There we go. So that's pretty decent spacing, I think, in between the signals. That'll uh, stop trains from blocking the road in case there is a blockage. And again, we'll just kind of double up. Not too far away from each other. And then as we get close to this little junction, so trains coming in, we want them to stop if the coast isn't clear. And then consequently, anyone approaching the junction, same idea. We want them to stop if it's not clear. Just because of the sake of clearance, I'm going to back that up because we're a little bit close to the road. So maybe we, if we had a really, really long train, we wouldn't want that block in the road. That's the same idea. Another signal right there, right? Okay, so a signal here, which means that if you are going left and someone's waiting here, once you pass that, it'll just kind of make sure the zone is safe type thing. Then we got one there on that side. Perfect. We could put one a little bit closer. I think that's totally fine, though. And then same idea. Anyone approaching, just to make sure the way is clear. We'll have a signal here. If that's open, you can go ahead. If not, you gotta wait. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. <clears throat> I know it's not the easiest thing to kind of understand right off the get-go, but the more you kind of put signals in place, the more it'll make sense to you. So again, people coming in, we're gonna have them wait just until the coast is clear. And then when that signal opens, they can go in and approach. And then a train leaving, once it leaves and passes that, that'll open that signal up just to kind of, you know, root everyone. There we go. So that's uh, that in place. Not too, uh, not too tricky. And what we're going to do now is put in a, um, a train garage. So 
so we can purchase our um, our trains and everything, and have somewhere for them to hang out if we're not using them. So sometimes I'll have issues bringing the train in. See how the rails snap like that. So just be be aware of that. So that's, that's the curb we're after. Not the fastest, but that's fine. And then what I like to do just for absolute fun, because I know that the city is going to build and expand around here. I like to have our um, train garage just kind of make its way, uh, maybe, you know, not deep into town, but into town, just for pure fun. And this is even better, like bonus points, but it's a bridge right now. So imagine this with like skyscrapers and stuff, and you have trains that kind of just make their way through some residential neighborhoods here and there. I, I, that's kind of neat, you know, I, I like that stuff. So we'll put our garage in just right here, make sure we have enough room for it. Perfect. Just had to remove one building, not the end of the world. And then we're going to have this go like that. Oh, too much slope, no worries. Mm, well, I guess we're doing it from there, no problem. And this does not have to be a fast like, crossing at all. This is just in and out of the garage, so speed's kind of irrelevant right here. Great, and we're bringing this in just so it snaps at the, uh, the same point. And it looks like um, what I've done here by accident is um, gone in with the wrong uh, side, which is totally no problem. So we'll just erase this. You can see that just cleans that up really easily. And then we're gonna switch over to that one and we'll just come in essentially the same way we did before. And then we'll find that snap point and then we can just run alongside that rail and that's you know totally no problem, right? Didn't really lose too much speed. Not much has changed in the way of terraforming, so nothing to stress about. Okay, so let's do a little bit of signals right here, just to make sure everything works properly. So just very, very, very simply, um, anyone coming in will stop them just until the coast is clear type thing. And then the coast becomes clear once you say past that point. We'll just have our little guys right there. And then on each side of the road, so traffic kind of, you know, works and moves. And then before the interchange, we'll have to stop. And then anyone coming in, same idea. There's your way out for safety. Have that one there if you want to double up, that's fine. And just have that one there. Cool. And that's what we're after. Okay, great. So let's buy a, uh, a couple trains here. Or actually, first let's put the line in. And then after we make the line, we'll put the vehicle. Um, we'll put the vehicles on it just so we can kind of keep track of things. So this is a very very simple one. Just going back and forth. You don't even need to click on a little rock again. So one and two. Very easy peasy. Okay, so trains. Uh, we know that our maximum speed is going to be 120, so we want the fastest train we can get. 45, not fast enough. 60 is getting better. 75, fastest option right now, so we'll purchase this. And, oops, wrong button, of course. Uh, buy that. And then we're going to find a train card that kind of works with our speed. So 50, you know, that doesn't work. 80, perfect, well, close enough. So we'll buy, um, buy that. And we'll buy four of them, because uh, we get 64 people on our train. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. That's great. And you don't want it too long, because then it becomes a little bit slow to start, that kind of stuff. So we're going to clone this. Not enough money, that's totally no problem. Uh, we're going to borrow. So I, like I was saying before, I think, um, maybe I mentioned it or not, but you can borrow up to 30 million. So we're going to borrow now maybe the 20 million kind of ballpark. We're leaving, we're leaving ourselves a bit of a um, margin of error, just in case. And um, there is loan interest, so you don't want to borrow too much. Um, you can always repay it, that kind of stuff. But just try not to spend too much in the beginning. All right, so three trains is what I'm going for. That'll get us a good frequency. And I get a lot of people using the, uh, the line. And we're gonna set these right away to line number one. And we're still on pause, that's totally no problem. Um, you can press the delete key to um, close a whole bunch of windows. So you have all this stuff open, right? You can just press delete, I'll close this for you. That's cool. So that's in place. Um, let's now do our in-town transit lines. And we'll make these pretty um, easy breezy. And this is kind of one of those little formulas you can do like a rinse and repeat really quickly in each town. And it becomes super profitable and just, you know, I think a pretty good just overall way to get um, in-town transit going. So we start with a little um, uh, depot right here so that the vehicles can do a quick turnaround. Um, they won't be doing the turnaround on the road. They won't be stopping on the road so traffic can still move. And we're going to have a combination of um, trams and buses. So you can kind of use whichever one you want. And I'll do different types of lines just so you guys can kind of get some, you know, ideas and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, so we'll start with this. 
And let's make this one a tram line. So I'm gonna click on the road upgrade tool. And we're gonna have a tram line that just makes its way through a little rock like this and heads down towards the train station, comes in here, it makes a little bit of a loop. And this is just gonna be one line. Oop, and of course, before we do that, we need our bus stops. And like I was saying, our little um, budgeting nightmare is gonna kind of uh, surface. And we'll be in the negatives. But it's really, it's nothing to worry about. Um, so what I'm doing now is gonna seem a little bit crazy, but when we're in the negatives and all that, it'll kind of make perfect sense. So what I'm doing now is putting in the bus stops, slash uh, tram stops, and I'm gonna be going way overboard with the number I'm using. So this doesn't mean that each route is gonna stop at all of these. It just means that, you know, if we find a more efficient route later on and we're in the negatives, and can't afford even a thousand dollars to put one of these stops down, at least they're already down. So if you don't like them, you don't have to do this, but I just kind of find that this is really handy, you know, especially if you make a little bit of a mistake or, you know, as the city grows, it maybe puts in a few more roads that just makes so much more sense for how a transit route should be going through your city. And then it's just nice to kind of have these already in place. Okay, great. And of course, this just leaves us room for the, uh, for the future. So we'll put, you know, more or less one on each block. And you can kind of see each one has a really, really good catchment. But those people still have to walk all the way to that stop. So just to make things more efficient, we have stops a little bit closer together. I mean, just kind of picture in real life, you know, how far do you really want to walk in between stops, right? And so I think we need just one more in town right there. Great. And you can kind of see the routes that have the tram tracks, they get a tram and bus icon. So it's a little bit easier when you're just planning your routes really quickly. So back to line two. Put this back in place and this route is going to fall back on itself so it's going to serve both sides of the street so it makes the loop comes back here mada bing mada boom perfect just what we're after get rid of this move into our next line and then this one is going to go uh, just through the outskirts of town and it's not going to go in here and we're just going to try and hit as many areas as we can here And then these areas here, we're just anticipating growth in the future. Like, I know there's no one there now, but the more people we bring in here, the bigger and better this will be. So you see how we're just skipping over this one? We don't really need to stop right there. Perfect. So we're going to move this off to the side. But yeah, the more people and goods and everything you bring into the city, the bigger and faster it grows. So you'll be pleasantly surprised at how big and everything this will, this will get. So we'll start here, number one. And the reason why we leave this open is it just gives us a reference point, so now we can kind of count down and just follow the numbers right here. Because the more transit lines you put into your city, the more chaotic all of these little um, arrows and everything become. And if we were to remove this, we lose those numbers. And so sometimes, yeah, if you have like five, six, seven routes over here, you're just like, um, where am I going? So just a little friendly tip, have these open. Good for the background type thing. So five, so you know, just kind of countdown type thing. And then at the end, once you have all of these in place, you just do a quick little visual check. So 13 and then 13, that's awesome, perfect. So we'll close all this. That's kind of what we need for our in-town routes. Nothing too crazy. Let's put in our depots. So of course the tram has to be on a road with tram tracks. That makes perfect sense to me. And I find, you know, anywhere between three and six vehicles, hit or miss is kind of what you're after. But you can always change them, send them back to the depot, sell them, add some more, whatever you want type thing. Just kind of fill it out. So we'll do that. Uh, line number two, perfect. That's all we need for trams. Class all these windows. Switch over to our road vehicles. And we'll put them, you know, close enough together. Like, what I like to do is have them near my train station. That way, if I'm jumping from city to city, it's really easy to find where they are. But we'll leave a little bit of a gap so some buildings can kind of go in between, just for, for funsies. Okay, so just, you know, five units again, it should be okay. Perfect. So that's the in-town transit done for Little Rock. And so we're gonna duplicate that over in Wilmington. But before we do that, we were saying that we wanted to connect Detroit with a, um, a little bus route. So I'm not really gonna bother um, doing too much in-town um, building right here. I might maybe connect a few of these roads just so it's a little bit easier for when the um, game's kind of picking and choosing where the new roads will come in. Get a little bit more structure already. 
it just doesn't really make sense logically to do you know a lot of this and destroy tons of these buildings and spend all this money if we're not even going to be um, doing too much building in this city right now, right? I just connect a little bit more of that up, a bit more of a boxy shape. That's perfect. And excellent. Okay, so we're going to put in just one of these little depots right here, and we're going to do it with hopefully as little casualties as possible to the buildings. So that's very expensive. Um, somewhere in the middle would be pretty good because it has a lot of um, good catchment area. This side looks like very expensive. Um, I think that's probably our cheapest option over here. I think I saw 200,000. Yeah, there it is. All right. So this line, super simple. Just clicking right there. And we're going to go uh, over to uh, this random point right there. Perfect. And we're going to put a whole ton of, um, of buses, maybe like 15 or so on here. And these, again, you can always adjust the, uh, the amount. And then really, they only hold nine, so it's not like we're you know, flooding the network here, right? So let's kind of click for a bit until I feel like I'm kind of done. Um, anywhere between 10 and 15 or so is totally fine. And you can check the frequency, check to see what the load occupancy is, just to kind of gauge if they need more or not. But there we go. So that's um, basically that part started. Let's duplicate our, um, our work over here in Wilmington really quickly. And since we know what we're doing, we can do this a lot faster. And I don't think we're going to be profitable right off the get-go, but that's, you know, to be expected. I'm not really worried about that. But if we run this for long enough, like you'll see in, like, our next little episode that we'll be making money very quickly. But we'll um, we'll at least uh, press play, and we'll watch our vehicles kind of go through the um, the tracks and everything. But we're going to be we're going to be going into the negatives. But that's that's totally no problem. And, of course, we're going to repay as much of the, um, of the loans as possible. So it stops right there. Stop over here. This is just in case we're doing some... Some loops later on and again just a little bit overboard with the uh, stops which is you know no problem totally a personal preference like if we don't really agree with that that's totally no problem you don't even have to do them you'll just kind of see what i mean like when you're in the negatives it doesn't make sense to borrow five hundred thousand just to have to spend a thousand right or more even and then the interest alone is like more than how much the uh the bus stops would be so you know totally up to you all right <clears throat> get all these in place a little bit more speedy gonzalez and i think to maybe mix things up we can have our tram be the outer route and then we can have our buses go the um inner route okay perfect so let's uh, do some upgrades to the uh, roads here get some tram tracks in place so this will be our tram route going through And again, no one here just yet, but that's, that's not a problem. People will, will come eventually. Why don't we take the outside this way? And of course, in bigger cities, there's nothing stopping you from putting, putting in an additional in-town route that maybe makes a little box inside. I don't know if we're necessarily going to do that just yet. I think we'll let more of the, um, the streets kind of make an appearance first, but nice to know that we have the option. Okay, so new routes. Or new lines, I should say. Let's do that. So this is our bus line. And that'll just go like this. And anywhere the um, the routes and lines will kind of cross over, it gives an opportunity for our sims to kind of do a line transfer, which is perfect. So extra money, that kind of stuff. Okay, great. So this is the trams. And we'll just route these ones on the outskirts. And we can see... Um, the little tram icon, so we know where, where we need to go. It's a little bit faster for putting these in place. And you can see, I mean, it seems a little bit daunting. seems like a lot to do. But really, it's not too bad. Once you get the hang of it, you can do this up pretty quickly. I just find this is just the most efficient way to get the best bang for the buck. Because if we're putting a train station in, and it's not really serving the whole city, like if not many people are actually using it, it's just maintenance costs don't make sense. And then same idea, if you've got this really you know, killer in-town transit line, but not really many people are coming from other cities to use it, you're not really maximizing it. So there we go. And then to be ultra, hyper, super efficient, what we could even do is have a bus line come from Buffalo into Wilmington. So let's just do that really quickly, and that just gets us even more people um, just coming into our, our town to kind of use our, our transit. We'll put that in place. I think I saw 100k there. Oh boy, that's expensive. There we go. 200 is not so bad. 
And then, you know, it's the same idea, just a quick little one, two right here. So, first one, and then over at the train station, bada bing, bada boom. Just get us a little bit more money. Okay, so depots. Always good to have one in each um, each city. Okay, so put that one, say, right here. Great. And then we're going to put our road depot, to say, over here. No problem. And maybe we can work our way backwards with this. So we'll do that kind of darky brown kind of color one, the buffalo, just a whole bunch of these buses. Again, somewhere in, you know, 10 and 15, somewhere in that ballpark. And again, just if you need longer, or sorry, if you need more, if you need less, just because your route is longer, totally no problem. A little bit of trial and error, but law of averages kind of says, you know. All right, so two, three, four, and five of these. Great set line. That would be line seven. And then great. Line eight. And then let's put our buses on the other one now. And that was line number six. Great. Perfect. So that's exactly what we're after. So I'm going to go ahead right now and put it on three speed. And we're going to quickly repay our um, our loans as much as we can. So we're at 48k, which is not very much money. Uh, currently sitting at 18 and a half million in loans, which is also not the best, but also not the worst. And we're going to let this just kind of go into the negatives. Um, and we'll just kind of sit back and enjoy. Like for me, that's kind of, you know, it's kind of the fun of the game. Once you get your little transport empire built, you can just sit back and watch everything. And you'll notice as the vehicles are leaving, even on the same line, some will turn left, some will turn right. And then the idea is just the game is going to pick the best spacing possible. It's just so things are a little bit more efficient. And you'll notice early on, um, some stops will hold a vehicle a little bit longer just to kind of get a little bit more, um, you know, efficiency in the spacing. And then because we've got this great transit line already rolling, look at all this uh, development happening. These new buildings are coming in. And then people are going to want to build and live near the uh, the train stations. That kind of has like priority. So you'll see a lot more streets and stuff start popping up through here. Even this road's already making its way over, which is really great. And we already got people waiting in the distance over there. And so yeah, now that we're in the negatives, can't really do too much spending. We just kind of sit back and watch and just manage things. Just for reference, we'll have this over here. A lot of our um, routes terribly in the negatives. I guess we don't even need to have it open. We know they're in the negatives. Not the end of the world. But if you want, this is where the fun begins. Um, we can lock onto a train, watch this in third person if we want, which is kind of fun. Or if you're into it, we can just slow this down. Go first person. Look at this. Just sit back and enjoy the view. And what's really cool is all the little extras, right? Like the steam that comes out. You can even see like the little rails chugging along and everything. All the mechanics of the engine. Your signals that go up and down. And I don't know, I just love it. Definitely a lot of fun. You can see what line we're on. You can see where we're heading. See our speed? And just imagine how much fun this is going to be when we have like freight trains going through, we got like more trains, different types of engines, we move into diesel and stuff, because we're going to go pretty far with this. That's kind of our end goal. So yeah, if you guys, you guys are enjoying this, hit the like button, subscribe for some more. We'll take this as far as we can go, we'll go like here 2000 plus. Just have a lot of fun. And so if you guys have any questions or anything, you know, definitely let me know. I'll do my best to, um, to answer them. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave you with that, guys. But well, thanks for hanging out. All the best. Hopefully you'll have some fun building in your own towns. And uh, yeah, I've got a Steam uh, Steam page going, a, um, a subreddit. So if you guys want to share some screenshots or that kind of stuff or uh, reach me in a different way, definitely feel free. All right, guys. All the best. I'm Imperial Jedi. I will see you in the next episode. Good luck. Happy building.